Hey guys, it's Smitty again. Wanted to go over something with you guys because I had a few people asking about port matching and and other things like that. And I'm, you know, I'm working on those twin motors, those uh, 27 twos, and thought I would try to do a little bit of a an explanation here for you. So bear with me. I'm not the greatest teacher in the world, but let's see if we can get through this a little bit painlessly here. And what people talk about whenever you're port matching, especially like we're going to use our carburetors here for an example, when you're doing a carb and you want to match your manifold to your carburetor, what you're doing is you're taking this ring here on the outside of the carburetor. You can see here's your pulse hole for where it's going on the manifold. And the objective is, is you, you put the carb onto your manifold here, and then what you're going to do is you want this hole to be perfectly matched with this ring, that inner ring there. So that way you have no step or any type of deviation whatsoever in the, in the way that the fuel and your air flows through your setup. So This is how it turns out. If you take the car usually and you're going to go ahead and you're going to take it and you're going to mount it onto this. Okay? Use your nut and bolt and all that to hold it together. Open up your butterflies on the car. Take you a nice sharp ice pick or a scribe. You want to hold the butterfly up and go inside and do... Yeah, you know, make you some scribe marks in there so you know where your cutting part is at. When you get done with it, you should end up something like that. This is the other manifold that came off of that, uh, the red motor here that I'm working on. I know it's a little hard to see here, but if you look in this one, you do not see the teeth marks. See, this is the stock one that has not been ported yet. You see all them little teeth marks in that one and everything? And you can see how small that port is in comparison. Let's see, let me stand up here with this and get a little bit better shot for you. That way you can look straight down in the white shirt. Let me get a flashlight as well on this. But you can see how big I opened that up. That's the stock. And that's the other one that's been port matched to the carburetor I'm using, which is an 11-11 Venturi. And like I said, though, when you're doing it, you're matching it to this ring here to where there's no deviation. When these are put together, they match completely perfectly like one big barrel. And that's how you want to port match your carburetor to your insulator or to your manifold, whatever you want to call it, isolator. And what that's going to do is give you increased air and fuel flow straight into the block. The second part you're going to do, yeah, we may need to go ahead and get the light back up here for you. The light on my camera kind of kind of sucks, don't it? What do you expect from a cell phone, huh? So if you look at the oblong shape of this port, okay, it's shaped kind of funky. You, you see a lot of deviation there, but there's really nothing you can do about it because the way that goes straight in, then it twists some and goes into the engine. Now, if you look at the port that's on the engine here, you can see that it uses the same type. The port shape on there is exactly the same between the two. And believe it or not, still did an excellent job of these because the manifold on this side here where you're going to your jug is absolutely perfect. It does not need to be cleaned up in any way. You can see there's ridges in there. And that's in from the tooling process where it runs through the CNC machine. That's just how it does it. It makes like a step, then a step down, another step down as it's closing the size of the port. But it is matched 100% from this port on the motor to this port on your, on your manifold there. So you don't have to mess with that. Now, if you want to take the time on any of your cars, you can get in there with some real fine sandpaper and sand out those steps if you want. Or you can use like a Dremel tool. You see, I'm, I use different tools here. I've got a couple of sandstone bits that I use. I actually also have some regular sanding ones. These are a real coarse. This is about a, I think it's about a 60 or an 80 grit that I start with. I can't remember what they are exactly. But they're really coarse, and that allows me to start going in when I first start working on a manifold and really get the junk out of it. And this is a very smooth sanding stone. I mean, it's got, I think it's right around a, I, I think, if I remember right, this one was a 220 or a 200. This, if you're using a Dremel, you want to use a 200, 2 to a 300, if you're just wanting to take and take those little steps out of there. 
there's a good shot. You can see those steps I'm talking about. Because those, those do make a deviation, like I said. But it's not that drastic. I mean, it, it's not like whenever, you know, I first started on this one here. And these teeth, man. Them freaking teeth. I mean, just are, are, are just... It's insane, man. I mean, you can see how much they opened up. And what I do with a flashlight? Here, let's get you a better look at them teeth here if we can. Ah, there you go. You can see them teeth in there real good. And you can see that ring here. What I did was, was measure this to that, of course, like I said, and then I used my scribe on this to that, the carb to the insulator. And then I used my scribe, and what it ended up being was the very inside of that outer ring you see there. It's kind of bubbled up, you know, probably air between the fingers and height. So your man, your uh, your gasket mashes on it real well. Let's see if we can do a, a match up here, though. We're going to set the stock one there. Here's the stock one. Then we're going to take the one I ported, and we're going to set it on top. If it'll cooperate with me here, and we're going to look straight down it and see if you guys can see what I'm talking about here. There we are. Now look all the way down and you can see how bad that that other manifold, man, really had to be opened up. Can you see it down in there? It was even off center and everything. But you can see the other manifold all the way down there and how much material is actually cut away to make those port match to the car. Quite a bit of work. You know, you want to be really, really careful when you're doing these. Um, if you do it too fast and you burn it, you, you really uh, risk a chance of cracking the material. When you're working on your side that has your, your pulse hole here, be very careful with your material around in here. You go too fast or you start burning it. And you'll know what I mean by burning. That's a smell you'll never get out of your, your nose for about a week. But you risk a chance of cracking it on the inside in here, and you'll never know it. And your motor will run like crap, and you'll be going, "What happened? What happened?" And what you do is you crack the internal internal on the inside of your manifold here, so your your pulse hole's screwing up, and you're not getting your correct signal all the way to your car. But just by doing that little mod right there on most engines, I will say at least 95 to 99 percent of them um, is going to give you. A very, very good performance increase along with the carb. Uh, I went over carbs with you guys before and I did a little write up in there on the, the tips and tricks and stuff. And uh, hey, just take yourself a little bit of time with it if you're not used to it and you've never done it. Um, the best thing to honestly do is always have a backup <laughs> just in case. And uh, I go around, you know, you guys know I've joked about it in the forum telling you guys I go dumpster diving for motors. I ain't kidding. I literally go to, up to the dump up here once or twice a month. And even if the motors are just completely shot, if I can get manifolds off of them, uh, you know, anything that's good, I, I take the whole thing, strip it down. I must have like 100 home light freaking manifolds, man. And uh, that way if I mess up on one while I'm doing it, I have a replacement, you know. Um, it's just a good idea and habit to get into. I also take the blocks to the bad ones and strip strip everything out of the crankcases and the, and the jugs, the bearings and all that. And throw it in a big tub for scrap aluminum. And uh, that's how we're able to buy parts here and there as well. <laughs> so just because it don't run doesn't mean you can't get something out of it. Yeah. Uh, but like I said, if there's anything else you guys want to know, hopefully that answered some questions and uh, we'll give you guys a, an idea of how to get in there and give you a little bit more performance out of your engine. Like I said earlier when I ran that, I was getting what? Was it 8400? I think it was RPM. Now I'll bet you 100 bucks just by doing that, I'm going to almost hit 9 grand. I'll bet you 100 bucks. So, Alright guys. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to run some more video here. This, this beastie running some more. It's starting a little dark and nasty outside and hopefully it don't rain before I can get a chance to get it all back together. I also need to double check the bearings on that one before I run it. So uh, we will holler at you guys later.